e hara taku toa, i te toa taku tahi, i ngāri he toa taku tēnei. Nā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa, ko Victoria Passau toko ingoa. Good morning everybody, my name is Victoria and today I will be presenting with the beautiful Claire Lanyon about Online Cenotaph. So Online Cenotaph is a biographical database of New Zealand military personnel and it also includes non-New Zealanders who served in the New Zealand forces and it dates from the New Zealand wars right up until Afghanistan and it was established by um, the Auckland Museum in 1996 and it includes about 140,000 um, records to date and it mainly focuses on the First World War. And this is a screenshot of the old Cenotaph database, as it was called. And uh, as you can sort of tell, it's pretty data heavy. It doesn't provide you with a huge amount of context. So you had to sort of be in the know on what um, that information meant and where we got that information from. It was very much a push out service. So that meant that we told you what was the verified information. You could provide us with feedback, but you could see on that page that there's really not much um, space for you to sort of engage in the site. And so um, we luckily <coughs> received funding from the Ministry for Culture and Heritage to redevelop the website. And um, we launched on the 22nd of January of this year. And I should say that this record is my great-grandfather's record. And we're going to see the updated version of Online Cenotaph. So Online Cenotaph um, now allows for user-generated content to be added, so the public can add information, images, documents and um, notes throughout the record, so they can contribute to every field. Um, the database was also transferred from the DB Text uh, platform to Vernon, and so that was quite a major task. I think it was a lot bigger than what we um, st thought at the beginning, so we spent a lot of time testing and migrating that content over before we launched. Okay, so this is what the record looks like. So it's the same record with my family updating some photos and um, adding some notes. And you can see every field can be added to. It's quite a long record, which we'll touch on in a moment. And um, all the content that you add is published automatically. We don't moderate anything. There's a, a good core team of two who uh, work on this project. So to try and verify all this content would have been a little bit unreasonable. Um, the new database allows us to source the content that we put into the core database, as well as the user-generated content. And contributors can um, be contacted if they choose to be contacted through emails. So we sort of stay out of the um, sometimes argy-bargy that happens between people adding content and other people not agreeing with it. Um, so you think, wow, this looks really great. You must have got positive feedback all the way around. No. So we launched on the 23rd of Jan oh, 22nd of January, day after. Somebody told us it was a load of rubbish. Um, I think the project's really taught me to um, toughen up. Not quite succeeded yet. I'm still a little bit of a baby when it comes to this. I try not to take it personally, but being called a sn like we've been captured by a snake oil salesman. <laughs> Thanks, digital IT people. You're the best. Um, and that photo of the guy really reminds me of Max Gimblet. I was like, are you sure that's not Max Gimblet? Um, <laughs> but it's not. No, okay, I don't think so. Um, and so we also got a lot of feedback from our historians and our genealogists, who a lot of our genealogists used to like to just copy and paste records, which was totally fine, because this is all publicly available information into their own databases. And so a lot of the older people, mature people, or people who don't necessarily enjoy technology found the new site to be a little bit challenging. Um, and somebody said that anyone older than 60 years wasn't going to be able to use it. But we've found that one of our users has added 3,000 pieces of data and they're in their 60s, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. And that was only, again, four days after launch. <laughs> Just breathe that in. Um, so through, during the first um, couple of months before Anzac Day, which was our like big launch day, it was a completely soft launch. So we didn't tell anybody we were launching. It just, people just love to give us feedback. We also got really positive feedback, constructive feedback. You can, you can, you know, give us, we can take it. Well, I can't really, but <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, so, so we did get constructive feedback within this sort of content. Um, 
And overall, we received, we've received about 2,000 inquiries, 50 of which were pretty, as my Michelle calls it, brick bat level. And, but that's totally fine compared to 2,000 pretty happy customers. We've had um, over, um, about 25,000 pieces of data added. The, the website now is really allowing for more personal and official data to interact, which is really great. So people are able and feel comfortable putting up information that it can never be verified. You know, I love, my granddad was called Bubby, and you're like, okay, well that's fine, you can put that up there. Before we couldn't, we'd have to verify it, and then if we couldn't verify it, then it wouldn't go up. But now people can put that information in themselves. And, um, and then the other element which is really great is that a lot of schools have been using this website and a lot of school children want to do something when they go on the site. They may not be able to add data, but they can lay a poppy. And so every year um, these poppies will be removed and you'll be able to um, remember the um, service person again. But for us in terms of our um, process, the images have been a major coup for us. To be able to get 6,500 images up on the site within the last eight months is really impressive. We had a very small team of staff, including just a, maybe two or three hours a week of somebody scanning images to archival quality. And so with our really dodgy maths, we sort of guesstimated that it would take us about 10 years to add that many images because we just weren't, at the time, you know, being able to scan as much as we wanted. So being able to get 6,500 images up is just awesome. So this is the technical element of it, is that people were very concerned that our content, the, the core data, which is, has been verified from military personnel files, nominal roles, and other primary and secondary sources were not going were going to be completely like dirtied by the public. And don't worry, it's all in Vernon, all of the verified content is in Vernon. And at other collection management system, which is Kentico that is the museum uses, um, keeps all of the user generated content. As I said, we don't moderate the content, it's automatically published, but we can edit, remove um, delete the content that has been added by people. So it's not as if it's just up there. Um, and then that content is then put up into the UI. And, and at the moment, Kentico is not able to be searched by um, the user interface. So hopefully at some point we'll be able to make the user generated content searchable through the website. So this picture is just to say that at the beginning, in terms of the inquiries, not in terms of the technical side of things, I was the only one really responding to inquiries. So it's about sort of like trying to emphasise that you need to have a team of people, a workflow to be able to support a project. Just because it's online and people can add content themselves doesn't mean you can just walk away and leave it to sort of sort itself out. Um, so we had to sort of think on our feet and. Um, and create you know, a really strong inquiries workflow and also just change our ethos in terms of how we support people. Before we sort of tended to be a little bit of gatekeepers, like you can't put that information up. We, uh, we have all the information, but now we're sort of trying to you know, emphasize Manaki Tanga and support everybody in creating a community. And lastly, from me, Online Cenotaph, even though it's digital, there's still going to be people very sweetly calling me a curator, which I am not one, um, sending me letters and saying, I can't add that content myself. So just because, it's, again, just because it's digital doesn't mean that you will not be manually adding content on there, so you need to have support team to work on that. Thank you. Um, so I am responsible for the Hapo Araha Community Cenotaph part of the project. And um, it really is about bringing the community um, in, first of all, I guess, making online cenotaph visible, encouraging people to use it, and encouraging people to co um, contribute to it. So we um, received a very generous uh, lottery grant um, to, to, I guess, do a couple of things. One of those things was to redevelop some galleries, some World War I galleries, but the other part was this community project. And as part of it, there are two physical elements. So one of those things is this uh, mobile roadshow unit that you see there. And inside, we share three um, stories of service personnel from online cenotaph, 
But the most important thing that's in there are these things called artifact digitization units. So we have nine of these artifact digitization units. Two of them, in fact, three, um, three go out in the mobile roadshow unit. But the cool thing is they're locked down to online cenotaph and obviously some websites that, that make sense around that. Um, people can sit down or stand in front of it and search for their person. Um, and then underneath that keyboard, you can just see a little shiny glowing box. That's um, a photo booth. So essentially, people can bring in their objects, um, their letters, their diaries, their medals, um, anything that uh, relates to a person within Online Cenotaph, digitize that, and immediately it will upload to Online Cenotaph so anybody across the world can see it straight away. So one of the cool things about this project is um, we have nine of them, as I've already said, but seven of those um, we loan to libraries, RSAs, museums, and other um, heritage organizations, or even events that make sense. Um, so they go out, they're a standalone thing. If anybody in the audience is interested in borrowing one, please come and have a chat with me. Um, it's a, a four-year program, so there's plenty of time, obviously, um, for you to take it on. You can see here, um, this is an actual photo that was taken on Anzac Day. This lady, um, whose hands you can see, she was wearing her grandfather's medals, so she digitized those, and she was able to share them with her um, brother, who's not very happy that she has the medals. <laughs> <laughs> and the amusing. <laughs> Um, so this is another story that happened on Anzac Day, and Victoria and I often go out to these events. Um, and we kind of, it's, it's really easy when you sit in, in, in the museum to almost forget that there's this personal side behind it, but we hear these amazing stories every day, and we see amazing things that are brought into us that we just wouldn't have access to, usually. And people are very, very appreciative to be able to share that. So this particular group, there was about 15 in this family, and they'd just been to the dawn service, and they walked in and started typing on the artifact digitization unit. They found their person straight away, and in little groups, they had family photographs standing around the ADU with their person in the middle. Hmm. And it was just such a cool thing. I kind of had to take a photo of it. <laughs> and um, from a couple of days after we launched, a image was added by a person from Malta, and his name <laughs> happened to be Albert and he added an image onto an Albert's record, so that's a little bit confusing. Um, and it was amazing because it was a carving of um, Albert Waitford's serial number that was carved into stone on a boulder in Malta. And we just found out this week that one of um, his family has gone to Malta to meet with um, Albert who uploaded the image. So yeah, it's just one of the really cool stories that we have. Yeah, and, and not only that, we just, you know, we, um, we've had dog tags returned back to families and medals, so you have this interaction mm -hmm. of, of, of families, I guess, m meeting each other for the first time, or strangers meeting for the first time, saying, hey, I've got this thing, I think it might belong to you. It's really cool. Um, so, here at NDF today, we are launching um, a social media campaign called Discover Your Connection. So, really, this was about enabling people to, um, first of all, identify a connection if they have a known or a, a familial connection, but also recognizing that f um, only 40% of New Zealanders believe that they have a connection to somebody in World War I. So we kind of took that to heart and really wanted to recognize it and enable people to um, commemorate and, and provide a focus for that commemoration. Um, so this is the hashtag. Unfortunately, you have to look at my face for a couple of minutes. Um, this is a tweet that I did on uh, Saturday, and you can probably hear that I've got this weird English-Australian accent. I'm fairly new to New Zealand, um, and uh, my grandfather served in World War I, but I knew that he wouldn't be 
on the database, um, he was English. So I put in my most important name, my maiden name, and um, found a guy called Cornelius O'Connor. And it was so amazing because this guy shares my dad's name and what a weird name it is. So, you know, I did and I, it was cool. And he, I had a little look at his record and he also lived or was born 20 kilometers away from where my dad was born. So he's my guy. And um, I encourage you to hop onto Online Cenotaph, have a look, put in a name, a place, a date, so some relevant thing that you are interested in. Please tweet, use the hashtag, discover your connection. It would be great if you could also put a link to that um, within the tweet so that others are able to have a look at your connection and maybe discover theirs. And if you're really, really kind, please also add in our um, Auckland Museum handle. So the future. To be honest, we don't know what we don't know. So we're not really sure how um, our content's going to be used, but we're really excited to say that the API has been opened up and it is um, described with linked open data, so you'll be able to utilize it in any way that you want. We're really appreciative of the museum providing ongoing enhancement support for the next few years, so we will be able to tweak any things that the people who think it's rubbish um, will, be able, will be happy with. And also just being able to create connections, and, and we just want to say a big thank you to all the institutions and organizations that have supported the launch. It's not just us, it's been a lot of people helping us along the way. Thank you very much. Thanks.